So now's the time to put in your bid for the name for element 117. I think it would be really good to name an element after Richard Feynman. So you could have the element Feynmanium with the element symbol, I think FY would be quite nice. I'm particularly excited about element 117. You might ask why, but 117 was the only element in the periodic table when we started this project where nobody had even seen one atom. It's never been observed in any form at all. So the field's wide, wide open, and I thought that it would be quite impossible to make a video when we were making videos about each element, about an element where nobody had even seen one atom. This arrangement just seems to fall to bits before it can properly form. Then, about three years ago, our first video wasn't very good, there was an exciting result from Russia, from Dubna, where they synthesized the first atoms of element 117. No, no, it's really exciting because it's, it's, it's the generation of new matter. You know, it's almost like a chill goes up your spine. It's like, wow, something new, something really exciting. So those of you who've watched our videos for a long time will know that if you want to synthesize a new element and have your experiments accepted, you have to wait till somebody else has repeated the experiments, done it a different way and got the same result. Otherwise, anybody could say, oh, I've seen an atom of elements so-and-so. In fact, there has been the case with element 118 where somebody did cheat and the first results were wrong and were faked. I've explained several times, and you may have seen some of the videos, how you make these elements. You take a sample of a really quite heavy element, and the heavier the better, and then bombard it with atoms of a lighter element, which you accelerate really fast. After days, perhaps, they stick together and you make a big atom. In the case of element 117, you choose elements where the atomic ad numbers, when you add them together, add up to 117. In this case, they used an element 97, berkelium, and calcium, which is element number 20. 20 plus 97 makes 117. And the atoms of calcium were accelerated in a huge accelerator in Germany at the GSI in Darmstadt to a speed that's about a tenth of the speed of light and banged into the sample of berkelium and created a few atoms. Now the technical problem is that berkelium itself is a highly radioactive and unstable element. And in a very productive demonstration of international collaboration, the berkelium was made in America in the Oak Ridge National Lab, and then 13 milligrams, that's a tiny bit, just almost too small to see, just a few grains, were transported to Germany. In order to do this, you can't just have a lump of berkelium, you have to have one particular isotope, a single mass of berkelium. They had berkelium 249, and this sample was transported to Germany, and it's radioactive. It has a half-life of 330 days, so it means every 330 days, half of it decays away. So not only is it radioactive, but you have to work quite quickly or your valuable sample is gone before you get round to doing the experiment. So they did the experiment, the berkelium was made in the Oak Ridge National Lab, transported to Germany, and then it was bombarded with calcium atoms, and they looked for the signals for the decay of element 117. And they saw signals corresponding to the sorts of decays that are here on my tie from earlier radioactive elements they've made. And the way these elements decay is that they give off alpha particles. These are nuclei of helium atoms, and the mass changes in steps of four. So the mass goes down by four units, 
and it transforms one element into another. And in fact, they discovered some quite interesting isotopes of other elements that were formed, which had never been observed before during this decay. If becalium is such a pain in the backside and they have to get yes. this tiny sample which decays away, why don't they use different elements? Why don't they use 50 and 67? I think the reason that they use these pretty light atoms is that if they get used bigger and bigger atoms for the collision, there's a likelihood that everything will smash up because the smaller elements are inherently stronger and they don't fragment when they hit the target. And so I think if you used um, 57 and 60, you'd just end up with a fantastic mess of fragments going everywhere. You might make the odd atom of 117, but it would be lost in the noise of everything else. So the next stage is that a committee, a joint committee of the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and the corresponding one of physics, has to decide whether the evidence is really good enough. If everybody is happy, then there's the exciting thing, they choose the name for the element. The, the people who get the honour are those that discovered the element originally. I'm not sure whether this will be the, counted as the Russians or the Germans, but I suspect that everybody will sit down together. And there was a huge team working on the latest project. I think more than 70 scientists from all sorts of different countries. And so now I'm going to put in my bid. I think it would be really good to name an element after Richard Feynman, who was a physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project. So he has connections with the Oak Ridge lab in, where the Berkelium was made. But he's also a huge figure in modern nanotechnology and a founder of much of the research that is being done now. So you could have the element Feynmanium with the element symbol, I think FY would be quite nice. Um, and that would also serve another purpose because when you see Feynman's name written down, a lot of people are not sure whether you should pronounce it Feynman or Feynman. But if the element symbol is FY, they will all know it has to be pronounced Phi. So my bid for this name is Feynmanium. A group of Russians and Germans aren't going to name it after an American though, are they? I think it's quite possible that they would, because after all, the Germans named element 112 after Copernicus, who was Polish. And I think we have got to the stage now where elements are being named after figures or places that have a world role. And nationalism is going away. And I certainly think that anybody who's read anything about Feynman could imagine that he was a typical citizen of any country. He is about the most unconventional scientist that has lived in the last hundred years, and also one of the really influential ones as well. Professor, for the last year or two though, I've heard you advocating the name Planckium. We still haven't got Planckium. Have you, have you abandoned your love of the idea of Planckium? I still like the name Planckium, but there's some other elements still, 115, 113, so there's still um, opportunities, and of course 118 as well. But 117 is an odd number, and it's good to name an odd element after an odd scientist. I've already got the prize. The prize is the pleasure of finding the thing out, the kick in the discovery, the observation other people use it. Those are the real things. The honors are unreal to me. I don't believe in honors. <laughs>